as you recognize by now, recursion is a very useful technique in solving a lot of problems, a lot of algorithmic problems, and in um, and as a technique for computer programming to implement solutions. Um, but here I want to stress the use of recursion to analyze a problem, and I want to introduce the phrase divide and conquer. Uh, people often speak about divide and conquer um, when thinking about recursion. Um, take, for example, the merge sort algorithm that we just looked at. We allowed ourselves to say, well, you just take a list, you cut it in half, you sort each half recursively, and then somehow merge those two lists back together into a sorted list. Uh, and we could say that we take that original list, divide that problem of sorting that list into subproblems of sorting the two halves, and um, that's basically the connection with that phrase divide and conquer, which is used quite a lot. Okay, so in mathematics, there's this notion of a recurrence relation. Some people say recursion relation, but the correct mathematical language is recurrence relation. And we can think about the time complexity involved in analyzing a recursive algorithm as um, inherently something that's going to involve a recurrence formula. So we'll see this very explicitly for merge sort in a moment. Um, all right, and then once you have expressed the time complexity using a recurrence relation, uh, sometimes the nature of that recurrence relation makes it amenable to um, solution by a uh, technique or by a theorem that at least Corman's and et al.'s book refers to as the master theorem, okay? And I believe that's because they regard that this is such a useful theorem in such a wide range of applications uh, for computer algorithms, for recursive computer algorithms. But, as we're going to see, it doesn't cover everything. So let's study merge sort um, with a fresh eye here and use the same notation that we've been using. Capital T of N refers to the execution time for merge sort when it's required to, when it's used to sort an array of size N, okay, of length N. Um, we already analyzed this algorithm and we know that T of N is big theta of N log N. We know that. Hopefully you're convinced of it um, based on the prior argument looking at um, basically analyzing it as a tree, a binary tree. Um, but, but, but here's the thing. I want you to suspend that. I want you to um, forget you, you know this. Okay? Because the idea now is that we're going to um, think about the recursive nature of merge sort, come up with um, suitable uh, recurrence formula for it, okay? Come up with the recurrence formula that expresses T of N in terms of T of some other stuff. Um, and then the idea is uh, when we do it on the next slide, we'll observe that the so-called master theorem can be applied to this circumstance of merge sort and that the master theorem will pop an answer out for us. We'll actually get the capital theta n log n as the answer from the master theorem. Okay? So here's the recurrence relation that I'm talking about. Um, from a straight forward look at merge sort, we know that the time it takes to surge to sort uh, an array of length n 
is equal to the time to sort the left half plus the time it takes to sort the right half plus the time it takes to merge the two together. And the time it takes to merge the two together is linear time. It's, it's capital theta of n time, right? Essentially constant times n, okay? Now, as a technical matter, if n is not even, then, of course, if n is odd, when we split the list of length n, the array of length n, into two halves, they're not quite equal in length. One of them would be slightly less than n over 2. One of them would be slightly more than n over 2. So the length of one of the, those two halves will be the floor of n over 2, which I remind you means rounding down to an integer. And the other one would be um, the ceiling of n over 2, which means rounding n over 2 up to an integer. Okay? So the absolutely accurate statement then is the t of n equals t of the floor of n over 2 plus t of the ceiling of n over 2 plus capital theta of n. Okay, the master theorem is not quite on the next slide. Um, we have one more slide in between. Okay, so... The problem with the recurrence relation we just looked at is the the you know the floor and the ceiling functions. Um, those are not continuous functions, and they they complicate life a little bit. So, and and if you think about it, what we're really interested in is not an exact answer. Um, we don't need to know t of n precisely. We're gonna we're we're, we're gonna settle for a capital theta formula. Our, our goal is to ultimately arrive again at the formula t of n is equal to capital theta uh, of n log n. And of course we um, just mentioned that the merging time in the recurrence formula we just looked at is capital theta of n. Okay, so since we're not looking for exact answers but but, but um, only this rate of growth type business, it, it is, it's ultimately permissible and we're going to allow ourselves to deal with the um, floor and the ceiling business basically by getting rid of it. And, and I, I like to think of it this way. We can take the, the function t and extend that from a function whose, whose inputs are integer values to a function whose inputs are positive real values. Okay, instead of positive integers only, we're going to allow ourselves to enter positive real numbers. And and of course, ascribing a meaning to that is ridiculous because uh, you know while t of five has a meaning, namely how long does it sort take to for merge sort to sort a list of length five, um, t of 5.3278 you know, is meaningless. But let's assume that this function t has been extended so that so that, that now makes sense. t of five point whatever I say at least is has a has a, a, a definite number associated with it. And um to keep everything under control, we'll assume that t of a fractional number that's between two integers, say say between five and six we'll assume that t of something between 5 and 6 falls, that that number falls somewhere between t of 5 and t of 6. Okay? And if you want, for simply you can assume that, that it's a straight linear uh, connection. So that um, t of x, when x is between 5 and 6, behaves like a linear function connecting t of 5 to t of 6. Okay, and that's probably the simplest way to do this. If we do that, again, we're not going to get precise answers and so forth, but it allows us to at least make sense of t of n over 2. Okay, so now there's a definition for t of n over 2. If n is any uh, positive number, t of n over 2 makes sense because n over 2 will be a positive number. Okay, so... What I'm saying now is the, 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 the t of floor n over 2 that we saw in the 
um, really correct formula on the previous slide is here going to be placed with just t of n over 2. Okay, realizing that t of n over 2 is only an approximation for t of floor of n over 2, um, nevertheless, it's a good enough approximation that uh, without fully justifying it here, trust me, it works. Okay, so likewise, we'll take the t of ceiling n over 2 and simply replace that with t of n over 2 and say, well, that's enough. Okay? All right, that now gives us a recurrence formula. Um, t of n equals t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2 plus capital theta of n. So t of n over 2 is 2 times t of n over 2 plus capital theta of n. And you see, you know, by, by this slight cheating, which I, again, stress um, is really no big deal here, um, we're avoiding having to deal with and ceiling functions. Okay? So now the time has come to introduce the master theorem. The master theorem is going to require an entire slide to present, and it'll take us a little time to read it and make sense of it. But our goal will be simply to come to a very accurate understanding of what the master theorem is saying and how to use it, and we will avoid trying to prove it. We may, for special cases, um, look at uh, rationale for the master theorem, um, much as we've justified the merge sort by looking at a binary tree. Um, similar reasoning can be used to, to justify the entire master theorem, but I'm not going to stress that. That is fully discussed, a, a complete um, a very complete proof of the master theorem appears in the book of Corman uh, et al. So I invite you on your own to take a look at that. Okay?